after studying this module you shall be able to know what is a stress and trauma learn about the various stress disorders identify the causes of these disorders and also to know about their treatment stress and trauma stress is basically a result of threatening and disturbing situations which cause the human being's body to suffer from from disequilibrium or imbalance of homeostasis it is important for the person to gain back his homeostasis in order to rectify and rebuild his or her emotional and cognitive organization in our daily life we may suffer from two types of stress namely stress that is negative and u stress which is positive in nature u stress is called positive stress because it is experienced at times such as when individual is preparing for his examination or a presentation this u stress provides motivation to the individual the stress caused in u stress is taken in a non harmful manner because it does not interfere with the person's cognitive functioning another important term one needs to remember is the stressor stressors are objects situations or stimuli that cause stress stressors have no particular specific demarcation they may be of slightest of danger to the person and sometimes they may be at the highest pressurizing level trauma on the other hand is defined as an event that is caused due to human or nature and these two challenges being faced by the individual associated to food shelter and safety the definition of trauma has been revised several times since 1987 uh, while it was given for the first time in dsm 3r there are three types of stress disorders which are post traumatic stress disorder abbreviation as ptsd dissociative and conversion disorder and acute stress disorder first we will discuss about post traumatic stress disorder or ptsd the dsm4 represented with the criteria and a number of symptoms which need to be met in order to be diagnosed with ptsd the dsm stated that a person suffering from ptsd must have at least three numbing two symptoms of hyperarousal and one impaired out of the following the person must show or report at least three numbing or symptoms that show avoiding behavior which are ignoring any type of feelings or conversation about the traumatic event making a hard effort to avoid going to places or seeing or meeting people who have been associated with the event in some way not being able to remember any aspect of the trauma or lack of interest to participate in any activity showing numbness and being emotionless restricted range of affect or no futuristic plans or views out of the following any two of the hyper arousal symptoms must be present or reported by the person which may include lack of sleep anger bursts very often lack of concentration hypervigilance extreme and exaggerated responses the patient must report at least one of the following intrusion symptoms that may include repeatedly occurring and enthusiastic flashbacks of the trauma nightmares illusions or hallucinations extreme distress now we come to the etiology or the explanation of the development of ptsd under which we have several perspectives we will be discussing first biological factors according to biological perspective hippocampus and amygdala are two parts of the brain which are responsible for emotions and memory of the individual thus when the traumatic event takes place these two brain systems get activated and are held responsible for the memory and the related emotions with the trauma there are two types of hormones which are also responsible in forming traumatic experiences these hormones are cortisol and norepinephrine these two hormones rise in level when there is a memory recall of traumatic event which leads to the fear arousal in the individual next we have classical conditioning model in this case the individual is stuck in a cycle where he keeps experiencing negative emotions which are associated with the traumatic event the individual is unable to avoid the emotions which arise due to the memory of the trauma thus it forms a vicious cycle which is difficult to stop events or trauma that could lead to ptsd there are several events that may lead to a trauma and in turn ptsd which may include death of a loved one war time sexual abuse childhood trauma or neglect 
natural disaster, rape, terrorist attacks, etc. Treatment of PTSD. There are several treatment modalities available to PTSD, wherein first is debriefing. This form is not exactly a treatment but a way of preventing PTSD from happening. In debriefing, the person who has been in the trauma or has witnessed the trauma is talked to. It involves only one interview where the helper or the professional tries to talk to the victim and tries to encourage him to speak about the event. It helps the person to let out his emotions. Debriefing is believed to have positive effects along with the negative ones by pushing the victim closer to PTSD. It helps to avoid secondary traumatization, that is how it helps in avoiding the person from any further imagination about the trauma. Next technique we have is exposure technique. This type of intervention involves the exposure of the most traumatic part of the traumatic event that took place. The person suffering from the trauma talks about the event to such an extent and till a point where he stops feeling any type of distress and trauma. This technique is very commonly used to overcome traumatic events. The next very effective technique to treat PTSD is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing technique. This technique was developed by Shapiro in 1995. This technique is one of the most popular and effective techniques. Then we have family therapy. In this type of therapy, the patient gains love and support from his loved ones or the family. This type of therapy provides the patient with support and a reason to live happily. Pharmacological intervention. There are many drugs involved in some antidepressants as NAOIs and SSRIs and tricyclics which have been effectively used for the treatment of PTSD. Next stress disorder that we are going to discuss is dissociative disorders. Under which first one we discuss is dissociative amnesia. According to DSM-4, dissociative amnesia is characterized as a type of dissociative disorder. Dissociative amnesia is characterized by the forgetting of important information about self. Forgetting like this is associated with an explicit memory such as personal information or information about the past and implicit memory such as general knowledge. Amnesia can be of four types, generalized amnesia, localized amnesia, selective amnesia and systematized amnesia. Generalized amnesia is one which involves forgetting of personal information. Localized amnesia is one where the person forgets about for a certain period of time. Selective amnesia involves forgetting some part of an event or act. And finally, systematized amnesia is one which includes forgetting a category of information, such as forgetting all memories of one's family. The onset of dissociative amnesia starts when there is uncontrollable stress and trauma, such as times of war, loss of loved one, death, violence, or natural disaster, etc. Next under dissociative disorders is dissociative fugue. This is another type of dissociative disorder. This is defined by DSM-4 as a sudden wandering away from home or place of work. In this disorder, the person is confused with his personality or self. It is believed by several researchers that it is more likely that a patient is confused with his own present identity rather than acquiring a new identity altogether. There is a great evidence about the fact that dissociative fugue and dissociative amnesia is the result of trauma and too much stress. Psychiatrists also talk about the soldiers in war who suffer from immense trauma and stress and thus suffer from these stress disorders. Next stress disorder we are going to discuss is depersonalization. According to DSM-4, depersonalization is defined as repeatedly occurring and persistent feeling of being detached from one's own self, identity, physical body and mental processes too. There are chances that a therapist may diagnose these symptoms as psychotic symptoms. But these symptoms differ from delusions etc. in one way that they are present without the impairment of reality. The person suffering may feel detached from his own body or may feel alienated, unreal and dead, but he is not detached from the reality. The patient suffering from depersonalization feels like he is like a robot or a mechanical machine which is detached from the environment. There are four major characteristics of depersonalization disorder which are 
a sense of alteration in self body such as feeling like one is not in his own body a precipitating factor such as substance abuse or an injury a feeling like one is in a dream and everything seems unreal or sensory alteration just like most dissociative disorders the causes for depersonalization disorder is the trauma stress child abuse domestic violence or any other type of stressful event in childhood or at present next stress disorder we have is dissociative identity disorder dissociative identity disorder has major characteristic which help in diagnosing this disorder person suffering from did behave in such a manner as if they possess two personalities or identities these personalities or identities are also called alters in the past patients were diagnosed with a few personalities these alters can range from 15 to 100 dsm 4tr has given criteria for did as follows the person must possess two or more than two alters or personalities each personality state should have its own pattern of perceiving the world around thinking and the way of behaving at least two of these personality states must be dominant at different points of time and take over the control of the person's behavior the person is unable to recall the actions or the things said at the time the person possesses as one alter the disturbances or changes in the personality are not due to any physical problem substance abuse or any type of medical condition the basic task of the alter personality state is mainly to protect the host personality from all the dreadful and sexual memories from coming up and being remembered these alters arise in order to keep the host personality safe and as a result of all the childhood abuses the host personality has tolerated the number of alters depends on the amount of time it has been or the severity of the disorder each alter plays their own role and sometimes one alter may know about all the other alters as well as the host there may be great variation in the alters some may speak different language while some could be of different gender some may also be old whereas some may just be a child the main cause which may lead to the switch from one alter to another may be due to a stressful situation or something that might have upset the person when the person undergoes a change in alter he or she may not remember anything about what happened moments ago or where he or she is the person feels like he is losing a lot of time or he might feel that he has no clue how he ended up in a particular situation or with a particular person etiology There are several factors which may lead to DID, under which we have a few entailed here. First one is childhood trauma. It is believed that children who have suffered from child abuse or trauma are at higher risk of acquiring this disorder. Studies show that the most cases report childhood trauma. The psychologists believe that during the childhood, the child is unable to protect and defend himself from all the abuses. Thus. he develops an alternative self or personality which comes out when the child feels that he is going to face danger or threat or abuse socio cognitive model this model on the other hand says completely the opposite it says that the patient's childhood trauma has nothing to do with this disorder rather it is the patient's own way of dealing with the stress when the patient is under immense stress and pressure he tends to behave in such a manner and develops an alter more the stress more the alters now we discuss the treatments available for did two different psychologists spanos and gleaves gave their own ideas about the treatment of did spano said that did can be treated by making the patient or the host or the original personality aware of all the other personalities and make him believe that they are real while gleaves on the other hand believe completely the opposite and proposed a completely opposite method of treatment he believed that instead of making the person realize that these alters personalities are real the psychologist must make the patient aware that these personalities are just self made and are not real the psychologist must make the patient realize that these are virtual people or thoughts not real people 
Freud believed that hypnosis could help in treating the idea. Hypnosis helped the psychologist to talk to each and every alter, to recall all the bad memories and then start re-traumatizing the patient. Another goal of psychologist or therapist in order to treat the patient with DID was to help them get all the personalities into one personality. This process is known as fusion. A number of techniques were used to help the patient to go through the fusion process. These techniques include play guided imagery, life skills teaching, projective techniques and group therapy to help bring awareness and understanding of other selves and through this eventually achieve cohesion between all alters. Major effects of dissociative disorders are ending up in a place which is unknown and unfamiliar, distortion in the body, gaps in memory, unrealistic feelings of self, voices from inside, feeling of detachment, changes in perception, forgetting, lack of social interaction, confused feeling of identity, finding items in your possession that you don't remember buying or receiving, writing in different handwriting, having knowledge of subject you don't recall studying. The next stress disorder that we are going to discuss is acute stress disorder. The major characteristics of acute stress disorder are very different from those that of PTSD. The development of extreme anxiety, symptoms of dissociative disorders and several others that occur within the time span of one month of the trauma or the stress or loss of loved ones. Another symptoms are withdrawal from enjoyable activities, social gatherings, lack of self-care, low emotional responsiveness and the feelings of guilt and blaming oneself for everything. Someone who suffers from an acute stress disorder is one who experiences symptoms including a feeling of detachment from one's own body, feeling like one is in a dreamlike state, lack of concentration and also an inability to recall parts of specific aspects of a traumatic event. Another important thing about acute stress disorder is that it involves at least one symptom from each cluster of the symptoms of PTSD. These symptoms have been mentioned in the section about PTSD above. DSM-5 listed five main diagnostic criteria for acute stress disorder. The first criteria include the any serious accident or injury, sexual abuse of any kind or death, first-hand experience of the trauma, eyewitness of the traumatic event, hearing about the death of close one or a friend, experiencing various details or information about the traumatic event. The second criteria of DSM-5 is that a person must report at least 9 to 14 symptoms out of the following four categories mentioned ahead, which may start or worsen after the trauma. Intrusion, that may include repeatedly occurring thoughts and memories of the traumatic accident, nightmares, flashbacks of the trauma occurring or repeating itself, prolonged physiological or psychological reactions, negative mood, which may include inability to experience happiness or satisfaction, dissociative symptoms, including losing time, forgetting important parts of the traumatic event, and feeling unreal. Under avoidance symptoms, Avoidance symptoms may include making efforts to avoid distressing thoughts and memories about trauma, making efforts in order to avoid the places, people, objects, situations, etc. that remind or are associated to the traumatic event. Arousal symptoms, which may include difficulty in falling asleep or staying asleep, irritability and mood swings, lack of concentration, exaggerated response, hypervigilance, etc. The third criterion for acute stress disorder is that the symptoms mentioned above or the disturbances seen should be at least three days to one month after the traumatic event has taken place. The fourth criterion is that these symptoms of disturbances must cause clinically significant effects in the person's social, personal and occupational functioning. The last and the fifth criterion is that the effects or changes must not be attributed or due to any sort of substance abuse or any physiological cause. The acute stress disorder may also continue and may result in PTSD, but there are chances that within one month the patient is treated and the disorder may not result or lead to PTSD. 
about 50% of the patients develop PTSD after a month of being diagnosed with acute stress disorder. The treatments available for acute stress disorders are pharmacological intervention, which includes just like PTSD, SSRIs, tricyclics, benzodiazepines, which are extremely effective and helpful for acute stress disorder. Then another treatment approach is cognitive and behavioral therapy, wherein the exposure to the information related to the trauma is given to the patient. Then we have eye movement desensitization and remission, psychodynamic psychotherapy, wherein focus is on the development and relationships of the person. Then we have person-centered and trauma-focused group therapy. Summary. Stress is basically a result of threatening and disturbing situations which cause a human being's body to suffer from disequilibrium or imbalance of homeostasis. Two types of stress we have studied. One is stress that is negative in nature and de stress that is positive in nature. Trauma on the other hand is defined as an event that is caused due to human or nature and leads to challenges being faced by the individual associated to food, shelter and safety. Post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD is a major stress disorder. DSM-4 presents the criterion for PTSD. Several treatment techniques have also been used. Dissociative disorders, dissociative amnesia, dissociative sleep, depersonalization and dissociative identity disorders are the cluster of disorder under dissociative disorder. Acute stress disorder is another stress disorder which has been introduced and the DSM-5 also presents its criterion. Its treatment is more or less the same as that of PTSD.